Everybody's asking about shooting drills. I need, I need eight players, eight players down here real quick. A bunch of shooting drills and team shooting drills. I don't, man, on this elbow, on this elbow, 18 feet out, 18 feet out, somebody behind each guy. We like to do this on uh, game day shoot arounds uh, because you're restricted with one basket and you want to try to get as many shots up as you can behind them over there. All right. Everybody here, everybody in the front of the line, balls at the front of the line. I need to get rid of that ball. I only need two balls, two balls. All right. In two minutes, we try to make, as an NBA team, you can challenge your team, we try to make 40 shots in two minutes. All right? You're going to shoot the basketball. You have to chase it. When you get it, you're going to throw a pass to the next, any line. When you throw the ball to that line, that's the line you go to. But you have to rebound your own basketball. All right? So shoot it and go. Let's go. That's it. Shoot. Chase it. Good. Okay, stop. Hang on. Now, a couple things. In order to maximize this and to get 40, you cannot be standing in line like this, waiting for the basketball to come to you. Every player should be in a stance, hands up, eyes ready. You don't know when the ball is going to come to you. There's no r rhyme or reason as to where, who's, who he's going to throw it to. Shot ready, shoot it quick and get it up. The more shots you take, the better chance. This is how you're going to shoot the ball in the game. It's going to be quick. You've got to get rid of it before the defense gets there. Okay? The other thing. I don't know how we don't have, we should have somebody in that line because if you always pass it to the line and you go to that line, there's always going to be two people there. You can do it, coaches, you can do it with more people in line here. The other thing is throw good passes. We're trying to do this as a team. If we don't make 40, we run that many lines in two minutes. All right, go. Go get it, quick. Be ready to shoot the ball. All right, so you get this, coaches. I'll, I want to move on. I got a bunch of things to show. This is just called uh, two-minute, two-minute sh four-corner shooting drill. Uh, next, next drill, easy one. I call this Larry Bird shooting. All right, I need. I just need three players. The rest of you guys are good. One, two, three, right here. Yep. Everybody else can go down, sit down on the bench. Here we have, because a lot of the breakdowns we drill is, is three-man shooting or, or whatever. I call this Larry Bird shooting. So you're going to be the shooter, you're going to be the rebounder, and you're going to be the passer. All right? And you're going to go elbow, or sorry, baseline to elbow, baseline to elbow. And, and with, uh, with two balls, you're going to keep passing it to him. All right? You're going to rebound. You make the pass here. All right? And you're going to see how many shots you can get in 30 seconds. Hold on. This is, this is a good story. We're doing this drill in training camp last year. And my assistant, PJ Carlissimo, uh, I said, let's go Larry Bird shooting. And he's learning terminology and everything, and PJ is a great guy. He goes, uh, so the players start doing the drill. Go ahead, you guys can start. Go ahead. Ready? Now you got to come up here. Oh, oh, oh. you got to come up here. You got to move all the time. Yeah. You're going to shoot one here, and then you're going to shoot one here. Shoot. One here. So you're always moving inside pivot, ready to shoot the ball. Okay? Shoot it. Get ready. Now to the corner. Stay low, see the ball. Hands ready. Good. Come on. There you go. Don't, uh, that's it. You know where it's going. You gotta move. That's it. Keep keep going. Anyways, PJ, I said uh, Larry Bird shooting. He goes, Why do you call this Larry Bird shooting? And I said, uh, well, I think you know, watching a long time ago, I saw Larry Bird do it. He goes, Do you mind if we change the name? I said, What do you want to call it? He goes, I like to call it Spreewell. I said, Why? He goes, Because this is the drill that we were doing when he strangled me. And I was like, <laughs> So. Those of you who know, I mean, PJ was coaching in Golden State, and I guess he was on, he was on the players about throwing good passes, and Sprewell threw a couple underhand passes even after he said it, and PJ got on him, and Sprewell strangled him and got suspended for 50 games. So, anyways, that's, uh, that's the, I've got a couple more here. Uh, okay, second one. Second one we do with three men. 30 seconds, you get pretty tired doing that. All right, three men at a basket, three man, two ball. All right, so you've got a basketball, you've got a basketball, you don't have one, you're out here. All right, you shoot first, and then you shoot after he shoots. All right, you're always going to pass to him, you're always going to pass to him, and 
All right, so, so it's as many shots as we can get. We usually play to 21, so go ahead, shoot it. Follow your own and make a pass. Follow it, follow it. Throw it there. Now get back out to 18 feet, good. Find any place on the floor, 18 feet. You know you're gonna get it, good. So it's three ball, three man, two ball shooting. It's a, a rapid way to get up as many shots as you can. Let's go. Usually we're playing against the other groups and they'll count them out, first group to make, to make 21. All right, next thing, I need five, five more guys down here. With everybody with the basketball. Good, okay, another, another team shooting drill is line up over here, line up over here. Your first, no basketball. He, no, behind him. Everybody behind, behind one of the two lines. And again, this is a shooting drill, but again, we're trying to promote, no, he doesn't need one. We're trying to promote one more guy in this, one more guy here, please, thank you. All right, again, this is weave shooting. You make a move, come into the middle, you catch it, you're gonna shoot it, you're gonna rebound it, go to the end of that line. You guys have all done this before? Yeah, yeah. okay, let's go, let's do it quick then. But we're not gonna cheat it, we're gonna make a move. Make a move and go. Nice and low, hard cuts off screens, good passes. Oh, that's it. You're gonna shoot it. After you make a pass, you're gonna shoot it. That's it. Good. Now, again, this is, this is for lots of shots, but again, don't, don't let them cheat the drill. Make a move to get open and come. Now, we like to do this from the top. We like to move that line over to the top and one line to the baseline so you're shooting from the 45 as well. So we'll do it from this side, we'll do it from the other side. All right, let's stop. Same type of drill, only different movement, all right? You need a basketball and you're gonna be, you guys just need to back up a little bit, all right? So again, this just promotes the baseline drive and the baseline drift. Just back up a bit, all right? What you're gonna do is you're gonna hard drive baseline. Hard drive baseline. As we drive baseline, man on that side is gonna drift. We're gonna throw the pass there, all right? After you throw the pass, you're gonna, you're gonna come right up off of a screen here. You're gonna catch the ball here. You're gonna turn and shoot. You're gonna rebound, go to the end of that line. You're gonna rebound, go to the end of that line, okay? It takes a, just a, two seconds to learn it, but once you learn it, it's very, very, very good. Here we go, go, come up. Here he is, here's the pass, this is your pass, and then you get ready to drift, good. That's why I said it takes two seconds to learn it. Here we go, start again. All right, here we go. Hold up, so over there, don't need a ball. Drive, come up, pass, get ready to drift. Wait, 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 Dr drive, go. There's the drift, come up, there he is, ready, wait. You shoot it. It's a shooting drill. That's it. There's the drive. Pass. Good. All right, good, hold up. Now again, guys, I, I know I'm trying to get a lot of things in here. Once they get this down like this, then we start teaching. All right, once they get this down, then we start teaching. When you're the drift man, when you're the drift man, you slide like the old table hockey games where you're in that groove. You slide in stance, right down, so that you can catch and shoot. And I'm telling you, the higher the level you play, the more you're shot ready before you shoot the basketball, the more you're gonna be able to shoot. Defenses are gonna be too quick. When we make this pass here, it's a hard drive. And again, we're, that's why we talked, the first thing we talked about was, was passing. It's a hard drive, almost right out of bounds, to find and put it right on the money. After you throw that, it's not lollygag up here or stand up. We're down low, we've thrown that pass. Head and shoulders low, off the screen. Sometimes you stand a coach right here. Off the screen, low, so I've never stood up the whole time so that I can turn around and come back and get into shot motion. 
Okay, so that's weave shooting, but we've in incorporated the baseline drive and the baseline drift. And this is part of, again, shooting drills where you incorporate some of your principles of what you're trying to do into everything. Uh, thanks, guys. You can come down here. I'm going to get into some of the individual stuff. Um, my first seven years as an assistant coach was all about staying uh, as late as I had to and rebounding for guys. And we go into different gymnasiums and we'd, uh, I'd see different marks on the floor. And I always, you know, after breaking down tape for so long and trying to find out ways, you go into a visiting team's gym and you try to figure out what do they use those for? Like some lines in Phoenix are for you know, defense. If the ball's in this corner, we want to force baseline. If it's up here, we want to keep it sideline. If it's in the middle, we got to get it out of the middle. You can just kind of predict what the lines are for. In Denver, I saw seven spots on the floor. And fortunately, I knew one of the uh, assistant coaches, and I asked him at the game that night, I said, what are the seven spots for? He said, those are for, for our shooting drills. And I've always been big on I've always been big on putting marks on floors so that players have a destination and they can see where they, where they want to go. And he gave me a bunch of the drills. He said, when guys are in rehab, who, who, who's a, who wants to do this? Let's go, come on. Grab a ball. When guys are in rehab and they have to get back in ready, they don't want to just run. They want to feel like they're shooting the basketball. So what you're going to do is you have to make one shot from each of the seven spots. Okay? But you have to touch the other end of the floor before you come down and shoot it. And yeah. Every, each time? What do you mean each time? Right. No, just the first time. No, of course every time. <laughs> do you, okay, does somebody else, you want to do it? Yes. You still want to do it? Okay, good. I'll let you start by shooting this one. If you don't make it, you got to come back to this spot. Okay, go. Good, go, 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 go. So this is how we would work with guys that were not getting enough minutes in a game. Get right to that spot. Shot ready. Here he come. Ready? Good for you. Go. This spot. You're on this spot here. Shot ready. Start thinking at half court. Shot ready. Oh, you got to go back. Same spot. Got to go back. Same spot. Again, so guys who are not in shape want to get back in shape. This is the kind of things. Guys who don't play enough minutes in the game, this is the type of thing that we do. Okay, same spot. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Shot ready. Let's go. We only got one, two, three, four, five more spots. Come on. Here we go. Shot ready. Good. Here we go. All right, stop. That's good. We get the point. Are you tired? Good. You know what? I, I got to apologize. I made a mistake. We only go to half court. <laughs> no. We go, we go full court for some guys. We make them do a full court. You do the same thing going to half court. And again, what it does, it, it gets their heart rate up. It gets them shooting. It gets them back ready to play uh, in games if they, don't, if they don't play enough minutes. But the other thing, there's, there's like 20 different things. And if I can find it, Adam, I will send it to you. It's on my email somewhere. And all of it is uh, using these spots. But uh, I need another. I don't want to. He's tired. Let's go. All right, simple things here, all right? All right, you're going to touch seven spots and do a layup, all right? You're going to touch seven spots and do a layup. So from right there, you touch that spot and do a layup. Go, go. Touch the next spot if you make it. Go, touch the next spot. There you go, go. Next spot. Touch and go. Middle spot, good. Next spot, good. Always see the ball. Open up to this side now, all right? Find, find where the passer is. You always see the ball. It goes back to what every, every coach has been talking about today. Always see the ball, touch it, and go. That's it. Good. That's it. That, that, now that's going from the spot in. All right? Now we do, yeah, very good. Um, when we want to get reps up, who, you, are you done? I'm, I'm just getting started, okay? This is a two-hour workout, all right? 
Hands ready, shot ready. You make a shot from there, all right? Now, what we'll do is we'll, we'll make five from each spot if we want to get reps up. So you can do, uh, you can do uh, five from there. But you're going to, from there, you, all right, you're just going to shoot five from one spot. As soon as he makes five, we would move to the next spot and we'd go around the horn, okay? Players have a competition when they play against guys that if you don't make, if you don't make three out of four, all right, you don't get to move to the next spot. And they do that all the way around. And if you miss two, you go all the way back to the beginning. So guys will compete against each other to see who gets around first. All right, second thing that we're going to do, all right, is that on the three-point line, outside of the spot, I'm going to pass it to you, all right, because you're going to be shot ready, and you're going to shot fake one dribble. Left, one dribble right. If you make both of them, you move to the next spot. Okay, so this, again, works on uh, shot fake. Good, cover ground, very good. Get back there, stance, good. Shot fake, one dribble left, get in. All right, let's say you made that, you go to the next spot, here we go. Now you're on the wing, shot fake, push it out in front, get your feet set, very good. Good, if you make them both, you go to the next spot. All right, so that's, a, that's another one. Here's, here's some of the fun ones now. All right, you're gonna start here, you're gonna shot fake here, you're going to dribble the ball on that spot, and you're going to shoot it from the other spot. Okay, now, this seems unrealistic, but what we try to enforce is covering ground with the dribble. And by using these spots on the floor, it's a shot fake. It's put it here, it's get your feet set, and get there. Okay, so we really try to, for younger players, it's, it is a long way to go, but what we're trying to encourage is creating as much space. You can't put it down there, right? That's why the spot's on the floor. That's why I like to have marks. You're going to shot fake, you have to push it there, you have to pick it up and then get your feet to the next spot. All right, give me a good shot fake. That's it, good. Feels very awkward at first, stay right there. Shot fake on that one, dribble on that one, shoot from that one. That's good. No, you know what? I'd rather you do this like this, and you're, what you're doing is you're teaching yourself how to extend and how to create space. It's a little bit awkward, but you know, extend yourself. We don't. We tend to do too many things more that are too comfortable. Good, and now we're gonna go back the other way. Move up onto the spot, that's it. Shot fake, put it, that's it, good. Very good, just push yourself to create as much space as you can. I, hold it, where did that dribble go? If you push the ball out to that spot, hold it. I want the ball, see if you can hit this. Can you hit this with the ball? Can you, can you shot fake, can you push the ball right on that spot? That's it. Good. Good. And again, very good. All right. So again, what this does is it teaches, teaches. It just it reinforces how to push the ball out and go get it. Too many times, even when we did the shot fake here, he put the ball here. We're not creating enough space for defenders if you put the ball there. This will increase your ability to to go further. Uncomfortable at first, if you do this drill every day, you're going to get better and better and better at it. All right, next thing, defensive slides, all right? Nobody wants to work on defensive slides, all right? But if as a coach, you put the shooting into it, they do it. Now, you've got to be inside, just be inside the mark in your defensive stance, okay? You're going to slide one past that one to that one, so the four corners are the only ones you're going to shoot it at, but you're never going to get out of your defensive stance. All right, go ahead, go, slide. Yep, slide, slide. Hands up, ready, shoot the ball. Go slide to the next one. Go, slide to the next one. Go, get there. Good. That's all right, go, 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 go. Slide, slide. And back, and back. Go ahead, slide. You gotta get there with quicker slides than that. I can beat you. And slide. All right, very good. All right, good. So again, it's just ways, but the way, the way it looks is the same thing that we talked about down there on the baseline drive and the baseline drift. It slides, you're sliding to get open, you catch, shoot it. You're never standing up. You're always down in your stance, catching it and shooting it. All right? Next thing we do is simply just, you're going to go from that spot and you're going to Shoot it at all four corners. I'm just going to keep giving it to you. So again, we're working on the inside pivot. You're going to get to that spot. Ready? Go. Yep. Just right to that spot and shoot it. Ready? There you go. 
to the next spot. Go, go, go. I got the rebounds for you. Here we go. Go. You got very good footwork. All right, we just need more reps and staying down nice and low. All right, so the coaches, you can push the ball to the spot. It makes them have to chase it. You can push it faster. And again, there you go, very good. And like I said, there's like so many different uh, things that you can do on this you know, with, the, with the dribble and you can be, and you can improvise yourself. The, the number of things that you can do from the spots. In and out, um, off the dribble. Sometimes we make the guy dribble it out, dribble out and back, lay it in. Push it out and back, keeping open to the floor all the time, all right? Uh, next thing, this is the, uh, so many of our young players talk about how good they want to be. And um, they will come in a gym and they'll come in a gym with a coach. And I, I, at university I had a, I, 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 it was almost like a trick I played on my, my team. I told them, I said, go and write down the five most important things in your life. And uh, they all came back with a list and it was family, religion, um, school, basketball, friends. And so I sent them that weekend, I sent them home. I said, okay, that's good. Well, I want you to document everything you do all weekend, like everything that you do. So, you know, from Friday after practice till Monday morning, uh, or Monday at practice when they came back. And I took all the things that they did and I, I, I called them all aside, one by one. I said, uh, you said, uh, what's the most important thing in your life? What's the most important thing in your life? Family. Family, okay. So I said, and most of these guys are away at university. I said, how much, did you uh, go home this weekend? No, it's too far. Did you phone home? Did you write your mom and dad a letter? Did you talk to your sister? Did you talk to your brother? And to a man, they, they spent maybe a five minute phone call was, was that they, they did. I said, that's okay. Um, I said, and you said religion was another big thing. Did, on church, did you go to church on Sunday? Coach, I was too tired Saturday night, did this and when I, I didn't go to church. Okay. So now I'm, I'm at point number three and, and I'm going, you said the most important things in your life were family and religion. And over the last 48 hours, you spent five minutes doing the two things that are the most important in your life, which is fine, which is fine. But then when we broke down, what they did was relaxing, playing video games, hanging out with my friends was the thing that was the biggest thing. And that was well below what basketball was. So I told him, I said, you know what, next time I ask you what your goals are, reestablish them because you're not, you're not, you're not doing that. And my point was that some, you know, people want to be good. People want to be good. But I don't know anybody who's been good. And, and if somebody would please remind me about Kobe Bryant. Uh, I, I'll speak about when I'm finished doing the, this, this part of it. Um, if the people want to be very, very good, they have to devote the time. And, well, you know, one of the drills that I, I had as a kid, and, and I t say this to coaches, if you can get the kids, and I mentioned it yesterday if you're new here today, into the gym, keep the gyms open, all right? Every player on Canada's national team, every player that was good, every NBA player that's good has a story about how they could sneak into a gym, how they could keep a door open, how they could find a way in. And I know it's impossible these days because of access and security and liability and everything else. If you want to be a good coach, keep the doors open as long as you possibly can and encourage kids to come in. And then give them a goal, give them a target. This one here, I call it Super 7s. Uh, you want to do it or you want to get somebody else involved? You can do it. I like your attitude. I like your attitude. All right. Super sevens. All right. What you're going to do is you're going to shoot the ball from all seven spots. All right. You're going to shoot it from here and you're going to run over to this spot. The reason I have the spot on the floor is every time you're going to dribble it, you're going to shoot it and you're going to catch it and you're going to rebound it and you're going to come to this spot and your inside foot's going to be on the spot and you're going to shoot it and you're going to rebound and you're going to come to here and you're going to do the same thing. And I used to do this drill every single day and turn and shoot. And somebody said to me, he said, how, how did you ever get so good at uh, your inside pivot and being able to turn and shoot? I, I said, nobody ever taught me. But you do a drill like this with a mark on the floor and you do it over and over, it becomes absolutely natural and you never think about the footwork after the first probably two days that you do this. Okay, go ahead. Yep. Go get it. Get to that spot. Shoot it. Right there. Go get it. Next spot. Shoot it. Go on. Hustle. That's it. One. Go. Let's 
go. Two. Let's go. You got any more spots left? Up the middle. Go ahead. Right up the middle. Turn either way. You can turn on that one and shoot. Good. All right. One free throw. One free throw. Okay, here we go. Again. Again. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to do it seven times. All right, that was one. You've got to do it seven times. What's seven times seven? 49. 49. Okay, so when the last one comes, on the seventh set, when you go to the middle, you go to the middle one time, you go to the middle second time. That gives you how many shots? 49 plus one, 50, right? So every day, I can tell you right now, 1983, getting ready for the World University Games on July 23rd that I made because uh, I wrote down on my calendar every day how many shots I made out of 50. It's a personal challenge. If you don't do it, you know what happens? You don't care how many you make. You don't care. You just shoot the ball. And you just go, I've got to get through this so I can get out of here. But every day, if you write it down, you become more accountable to it, and you, and you do that. It's 50 shots. It's called Super 7s. All right? And you have kids that want to be good. You guys want to be good. I don't know why you wouldn't do that every day, because then it becomes absolutely natural. I can drill you all day as a coach outside and, and make those passes to you. But if you do this every single day, and you do it 50 times every single day, that movement and that natural motion becomes absolutely natural. Coming off the other side, over here, with the inside pivot foot, it becomes absolutely natural, getting your body square and doing it. And just over and over, it's repetitions, and then you're not thinking about anything other than making shots because the footwork becomes absolutely natural, and you're at a perfect age to do it. The other thing that I'll tell you is that you should do you know, form shooting. All right? When Steve Nash walks on the basketball court, the first thing that he does is not what I saw some of you guys doing during one of the breaks today, which is stand on the free throw line or on the three-point line and try to shoot the ball. All right? Stands underneath the basket and works on the form. All right? Everybody's form can get better. He's one of the best in the league. He's the best free throw shooter in the league over the last five years. And he will stand for 10 minutes before practice starts. And he will work on form and follow through. Steve, we talked about earlier, it's funny, you know, how we have different memories. One of the things that I always try to remind young kids is he talked about the uh, Michael Jordan play. Uh, I have that picture, and the thing that I talk about with shooting all the time was, um, and we agree that he did push off, but when he shot the basketball at the end, Michael Jordan was at center court, and that hand was still up there with the follow through. And I think too many kids push it and don't follow through. The good shooters, the great shooters, hold follow through to the point where it's over exaggerated. All right? I can remember. I know I'm aging myself, but Reggie Miller, when Reggie Miller made threes and one of the best three-point shooters, and Ray Allen to this day is very similar, when Reggie Miller would make a three, didn't he do that? He would keep that hand up there and do his little prance backwards down, but the point of it was the over-exaggeration of the follow-through is important. All right? The other thing that, when I was in high school, I, I, I had the dream of playing on Canada's national team. And I couldn't do it because I didn't have grades to get into university. And when I saw Canada's national team play, I had a teacher who showed me that every player who was playing on Canada's national team was at university and that I wasn't going to be able to get into university if I didn't start studying and taking school seriously. Okay? So I made a list of all the things that I wanted to do. I had to get better with my ball handling. There was a 45-minute break. I dribbled a basketball to school. Uh, everybody can become a better ball handler. Everybody can be, become a better ball handler. I, Pete Maravich was my favorite player. Again, I'm aging myself. Um, but Pete Maravich, there were stories where he dribbled a basketball everywhere he went. He dribbled to school. I dribbled to school with a basketball because at 6'4", I knew that I was a forward at high school, but I was going to have to be a guard for the rest of my life. Right? So I had to learn how to dribble basketball. So I had a rubber basketball. Every time I went to camp, I would buy rubber basketballs, and I gave the basketballs away, and I would want kids to wear them out. I dribbled a basketball to school. On the grass, through the snow, 
It didn't matter. I'd go, my friends want to go hang out. We're going to go see a movie. I brought my basketball. All right? The basketball has to become part of your hand. If you really want to be good and you want to get better at ball handling, there's only one way to do it is dribble a basketball. There are stories about Steve Nash, I'm sure you've heard, that walking around the campus at Santa Clara University, he dribbled a tennis ball everywhere that he went. He dribbled a tennis ball everywhere that he went, and maybe now one of the best ball handlers in the league. But you have to make the sacrifices. You have to do things that are slightly outside the box. All right? My 45 minutes in, uh, in high school is when I had that one spare, and I knew that I couldn't get into the gym that night because I had to study, because if I didn't study, I was never going to get into university. If I couldn't get into university, I was never going to play on Canada's national team. So in 45 minutes, there was a gym, and I had to create what I could do in 45 minutes. How can I get as many shots up as I could in 45 minutes? So I put four spots on the floor, all right? I need somebody else for this one. Uh, you've done a great job. Thank you. Yeah, come on. Very good. All right. You're going to shoot from this spot here, and you're going to shoot 25 shots. You're going to rebound your own every time. All right, you're going to rebound your own. You're going to get back to that spot. Inside pivot if you want. Outside pivot, get to the spot, turn, shoot the basketball by dribbling it. Go ahead. Here we go. Go. Get there. One. Quick, quick, quick. No. Don't, don't put it down once you get there. Dribble it to the spot and turn and shoot. Two. Three. Go. Go. Come on now. This is fast. That's better. Good. Three. Set. Three for four. Turn, turn different ways. Don't turn the same way all the time. Left foot down one time, right foot down one time. That's it. Go. Back again. Quick, quick, quick. Go. Let's go. Step right in. You've got to get rid of it quicker. Good. Let's go. What's that? Eight. Got to get 25. Get to that spot. Good. Get there. Get there. Get there. Come on. Let's go. Get there. Come on. You don't want to miss long. That makes it tough. Go. Go, 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 go. What are we at? Anybody got a count? 15, 14, 15? 14. Let's go. Get to the spot. Let's go. Ten more. Get there. Come on. Go, go. Come on. Hustle, hustle. Go on. Let's go. Sixteen. Let's go. Seventeen next. Let's go. Come on. Get there. Twenty-five. Let's go. Let's go. Keep going. Go. Let's go. Five left. You got five left. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Come on. Four left. Good. Get there. Get there. Get to that spot. Good. Two left. Let's go. Get the last two in. Good. Get there. Good. 25. All right, good. Free throws. All right. 10 free throws, then you're going to do the same thing here. All right. 10 free throws, then you're going to do the same thing here. 10 free throws, you're going to do the same thing here. How do you think you're going to feel at 48 and four, or 98, 99, and 100? Tired. tired. You're tired now. But you know what? I'm not going to make you do it, but good job. That's how you want to shoot the basketball, though. You want to shoot the basketball when you're tired. You want to shoot the basketball where it's the fourth quarter and it's late in the game and you've got to get to that spot and you've got to get there. And you know what? The first few days that you do this, you're going to be tired and you're going to be huffing and puffing. And you'll be tired and you'll be huffing and puffing the whole time. But what that will do is it'll help you learn how to shoot the basketball when you're tired. It'll help you learn how to shoot the basketball off your left foot, off your right foot. I didn't want to correct you there, but you know, you want to come off both feet and you want to get there. You want to get that spot quick and you want to stay low when you get there and you want to turn and you want to shoot it and you want to get back. And you'll learn how to do that from the different areas. And you'll learn how to shoot the ball when you're tired. All right? You do not want somebody rebounding for you. Because coach comes in the game or into the gym 
and he rebounds for me. And you know what? The next thing he wants, my turn to shoot. You don't want to share the ball. Be selfish. You don't want, because if he shoots and I have 45 minutes, guess what? I'm not getting my 300 shots in. All right? Now, I shoot 10 free throws to start, just so the math is all right. 25, 10 free throws. 25, 10 free throws. 25, 10 free throws. So I'm, I'm at 150 right now. Now I do the second part of the drill. All right? I used to call that my man-to-man. -man. All right? Here we got, the, we got the zone. All right? Five spots, 20 shots. All right? First 10. First 10 is you're going to imagine, because you're in a gym by yourself, all right? You're going to imagine that you're playing against zone and the ball's being swung to you. So I would sit like this, and all of a sudden, stance, everything, here comes the pass, catch, shoot. All right? That's how, you, that's how you're going to do it 10 times. Okay? Another ball. Can I get my rebound? You've got to go get your rebound, and you've got to get back out and do the same thing. Right? And visualize. I used to sit there and visualize Eli Pasquale driving down the middle of the floor, and I'm standing, waiting, waiting, waiting. Ball comes, catch, shoot. It's got to be a quick release. Catch it and do it again. Let's go. Ten times. Good. Go get it. You don't have to be on the three-point line, just where you're comfortable shooting it. Okay, stop. He's going to do that ten times. The next ten. He's made shots now. All right, let's think. Let's visualize. All right, the next ten. The defense is going to run at you. Shot fake. One dribble. Pull up. All right, do that. Five times right, five times left. Go. Very good. Get it back out. Same spot. Get it back out. Same spot. Good. All right. Good. You can do that five times and you go left. Now you go left. Five times. Okay. You get it? That's 20 shots there. 10 free throws. 20 shots here. 10 free throws. 20 shots there. 10 free throws and around. I'll tell you, it takes 45 minutes because I did it every single day. And I can tell you, again, I used to love keeping track of things. If you don't write down what your result is, if you don't write what your total was, I know I was 246 on one day. All right, I can tell you the date. I've got it in my calendar, my day timer. You guys all have day timers. It's part of this curriculum now. You have to have it, right? In the bottom corner of mine, it says slash 300, 240. And you know what? If I went to bed that night and that day timer sat beside my bed and I couldn't write down 240 out of 300, I couldn't sleep. And I had to do it the next day, all right? And it takes that to take it to the next level. You can go in and you can depend upon coaches, all right? And coaches are, do a great job of motivating players. But when players tell you they want to be good, put them to task. Make them sit down, make them write it down, show, show what they can do here. Um, anyways, those are some of the individual things that you can do as players if you want to be good, all right? And I, I said to remind you about Kobe, all right? I'm working with the USA team, and I'll, I've got a couple of stories to finish up here. Uh, working with the USA team the first year, and I get on the bus, and Kobe Bryant is sitting there uh, beside me, and we're in Las Vegas. And I, said to, I said to him, I said, uh, what'd you do last night? I figured we're in Vegas. So he'd have a pretty good story. And uh, he said, Coach, I went to bed at 9.30. I said, we're in Vegas, man. Come on. He goes, no, my Pilates instructor wakes me up at 7 o'clock. He's in the room next to me. And I, do, I said, you do Pilates? And he said, yeah, I do Pilates every day. I said, why would you do Pilates? He goes, core strength and flexibility will allow me to play the game longer than anybody else. I said, oh, okay. And then he said, at 8 o'clock, I lift weights down in the weight room at the hotel because I, I need to maintain my, my strength. At 9 o'clock, we have our breakfast. At 10 o'clock, we have our team meeting. 11 o'clock till 2, we have a three-hour practice. And I, and I said, well, yeah, that's pretty good. He goes, then I come back. I said, what do you mean you come back? He goes, from 5 to 7, I go back with uh, one of the other assistant coaches. I said, really? He goes, every day. I said, anybody else go back? He goes, no. And I said, okay, so what do you do? He goes, come if you want. So I went back that night and watched. It was the most, well, other than when I worked with Steve and watched him work out, the Kobe Bryant workout was put this 300 shots that I used to do every day to shame. It was the shots that he min wins basketball games on, those fadeaways, and he was completely drenched. And he was the only guy. So arguably the 12 best players in the United States are all together, and there's one guy who's going back and getting extra shots. And, that. and, I, and so I got to talking to him more and more, and I said to him one time, I said, hey, this is when he changed his number from 8 to 24. And I said, uh, just I figured I was getting closer with him. 
And I said, uh, you, changed your, you changed your jersey um, number there. You're trying to sell more jerseys. Is that it, marketing? And he, go, he, he looked at me, steely eye, right in the face. He goes, no. He says, 24 is the number of hours in a day. He says, and I am going to be the best basketball player in the world if I can work for 24 hours a day. And that's my reminder right there. And that was four years ago. And in that time, he won an Olympic gold. He won two NBA championships, and he was the MVP of the NBA. When people have dreams, and they tell you that they're going to do it, all right, and then you watch them work through it and do it, that's when you go, OK, that guy's my favorite player. People ask me who, the, who my favorite player in the NBA is. It was not him until I saw that and that transformation. I went to work out in the weight room because our days as coaches were long, and I went to work out in the weight room, and that for the second morning, Kobe was there at 8 o'clock, just like he said he was going to be there. A week later, while we're still there at training camp, now LeBron is down there, and Dwayne Wade is down there, and I think that that's why we've seen a resurgence of some of the star players is because they started following Kobe, and he's the, he's the type of guy that's going to take it to that next level. The last thing for coaches, uh, and I share this with you, Coach K gave this, uh, gave this to us. Um, he, he, he embarrassed, he embarrassed a, a, one of the players. He said, he said, come on out here. He said, can, I, can you do me a favor? Can you, can you go down on the floor and do a push-up on one finger? One, one, no, no, one finger. Just one finger, yeah. yeah. All right, it's impossible. Thank you. I know. It's impossible. You can't do it. But he, he, said, and he said, this is the biggest problem in the game. He said, this is the biggest problem in the game. He says, is that there's too much of this. You make a shot, and the players are going like, yeah, or like this. Or if you did something wrong, they're pointing fingers at blame at somebody. And, and, and Coach K talked about how this is the weakest thing you can do, is be like this. He said, go down. And he said, if you take five of them, though, and you pull all five together, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Now get down on the floor and do a push-up on your fist. Can you do that? It's not the answer I was looking for. <laughs> there you go. Good. All right. Come here. Poke me. Poke me with your finger. All right. Doesn't hurt at all. Put all five together. Now hit me. Never mind. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. That would hurt. All right. And, and, and his whole point was there's a power in team. And there's a power being together. And if you watch Duke and you watch the USA basketball team, uh, when they get together and they bring it in, nobody's like this. Nobody's like this. It's all fists. It's all fists. And if that's their sign, their sign of unity. Um, I could go on. I have tons of stories. Why do we coach? Why do we coach? Why do, why, why do we coach? It's not, you know, for the first time ever, I mean, I, I really got paid to coach, which was, which was good, but it ended, right? But the, the joy in coaching, and I hope that you find the same thing as coaches, is the players that go to your basketball camps, or that you coach, that you help change their lives. And I think of a guy, and I've coached some great people, but one of my favorites is a guy by the name of Michael Chong. And Michael Chong was a guy who played at New Westminster High School when I was coaching at Simon Fraser. And his team made it to the BC High School Championships, and I was there with two scholarship spots open, searching all these players. And this kid plays in a game, and I'm looking at him, and I recognize the name and whatever, but I don't think he's that good. And so on, he's a point guard of this team, and it's the first time that New Westminster has ever been to the high school championship tournament. And after the game, he dribbles up with a rubber basketball up the stands to where I was sitting, and he said, hey, coach, how you doing? I said, I'm great. And uh, he goes, you remember this? And it was, it was one of the balls that I had given at my camp. He said, you told me a story about how you dribbled a basketball everywhere that you went. He goes, look at this, coach. It was completely smooth. There wasn't a pebble on it. There wasn't, there wasn't a seam on it because he had worn it out. He said, I dribble this everywhere I go. I dribbled it to the games at the BC High School Championships, and I'm dribbling it home right now. And I was like, wow, that's great, man. I got it so good. I said, I, you, you played well, too, and your team's finally here. He goes, yes, and I'm coming to play for you next year, coach. That's Simon Fraser. I was like, well, I have two scholarship spots open, and I really like these two kids, and I don't know. He goes, no, coach, I'll walk on. But I, I, I'm coming to play for you next year. I was like, okay, I don't know if I have a spot, but I, I love your attitude. Anyways, September rolls around, and he comes into the basketball office. He says, when do tryouts start, coach? I know you don't have a scholarship, but I'm going to play for you. I was like, um, 
Well, we start today. I mean, we'll see you down there at 4 o'clock. And he went down there, and my assistant coaches are like, what's, he, what's, this, what's this kid doing here? And I said, he wants to walk on. I said, I couldn't tell him no. I've got to give him a tryout. So he, he, he tries out, and he's not very good at the level, but he worked his butt off, and he could handle the basketball. And as the trial camp goes, we end up, we end up keeping him. And because he can run an offense. And we figured, you know, he'll be, he'll be the guy that will run the offense and run the other team sets for us and everything. So I call him in to, to offer him um, and, and tell him, yeah, you're going to make the team. And I, and I was really, like, when somebody says they want to do something and they follow through and they do it, I think it's really impressive. But then he told me, he says, Coach, he said, uh, I'm going to have a lot, to, I have a lot to do here in, those, in these two years. I said, what are, you, what are you talking about? I said, you you got four years of eligibility. He said, no, Coach, I'm going to be a doctor, so I have to go to med school after my sophomore year. All right, so I just want you to know that I'm only going to be here for two years, but I'll help you out as much as I can. And the guy went on, and he's a doctor right now. And it's, you know, those are the reasons that you're coaching, because one story, and they, and, and, and they, and they motivate. Uh, my favorite national team story is, uh, is Sean Swords, because, who's a coach now. Sean Swords was the heart and soul of our team, and I almost made the biggest mistake ever, because in 99, when I was coaching the team, uh, we decided who we were going to cut, and uh, the coaches said, you know, it's a t- tough thing to cut players, especially at that level. And I went and I cut two guys, and then I called Sean Swords in, and I said to him, I said, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to have to cut you. We're down to 12 right now. We leave for Australia tomorrow, and, um, you know, you, you, you worked your butt off. You did everything we asked you to do. You play great defense. You, you hustle. You're a great person. You're a hard worker. And I, I said, I don't, yeah, I don't know why I'm cutting you. you. Never mind. You're not cut. And so I, I, I cut him and I uncut him within 30 seconds. And I walked into the coach's room and they said, they were all sympathetic. How did it go? How did it go? And I said, well, it, not very good. I couldn't do it. We have 13 players. They go, coach, we leave tomorrow for Australia for that five game series. We can't have, we can't go with 13 guys. I said, well, let's phone. Let's phone down there and find out. So we phoned down. One of my assistants said, I'll, I don't have to go. This is about finding out who our team is. So let's take one less assistant coach and go down there. So we phoned down there, and Australia says, oh, no, no, no. You can't do that because the numbers have to internationally have to be 4 to 15. And we're like, well, it's an exhibition series. Okay, well, he'd have to wear a jersey with either a zero on it or no number. And we were like, fine, that's good. We'll do, we'll, we'll do it. We're bringing 13 players. I called him in the next day and I apologized. I said, sorry, I had to cut you and that this is the way things un- unraveled, but you're going to go. And the unfortunate thing is you're going to have to wear a, j- a jersey that says zero or has no number on it. And then he said uh, what was probably the most important thing to me and it verified why I had made the right decision. He said, coach, if it says Canada on it, I don't care. And I said, okay, let's go. And we go down there, and he was one of the instigators in a lot of those fights that I talked about. <laughs> <clears throat> because he played so darn hard. But um, he actually played very few minutes, uh, and I actually had him sit beside me as a coach. Like, cause, uh, can you sit there? Because I have no assistant coach now. We're going down with 13 players. We're going down blind. Um, the, the fourth game, as I go back to that, that we play, we get blown out by 20. And now we're going into Sydney to play in the site where the Olympics are going to be played. And when we're there, um, after we lost by 20, I kind of lost my mind as a coach. And I said, uh, I said, who's going to do what I ask? I want the ball going side to side. We're taking quick shots. We think because we beat them once, we can run up and down with this team. They're too good. I said, who can do what I want? And five hands went up. I said, good. One, two, three, four, five. You guys are starting. Let's go tomorrow. And so we get, we get there the next day, and I said to my trainer, um, who, it's another story, a little Chinese guy. Um, I said to him, who did I say is starting tomorrow? And he goes, oh, yeah, Coach, you don't want to know. <laughs> he said, who, you know, of course, it's all the guys who haven't played. Who's gonna, who will do what I ask? Those hands go up. So Serge is one of those guys. And uh, we go out that game, and this, the five guys, I said, I can't go back on what I said. I have to play them. So they come down, and they do exactly what I said. Ball goes side to side to side. They wear them down. It's 9 nothing, and Australia calls a timeout. And I, I was like, keep it going, and you guys are going to stay on. Alone. Well, Swords was one of those guys who hadn't played that much. And I'll never forget his stat line. It was 9 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists. He was one away from a triple-double in every category, and we beat Australia in that game. Uh, and we went back to Canada. And the coaches were there, and they're waiting for me, and we've got to get ready to go to the Olympic qualifying tournament. And I said, you guys have to help me pick 10 players. I said, Steve Nash is on the team. 
as our number one guy. And Sean Swords is on the team as our number 12 guy. Because if you can sit for four games and not play, and then come out and play with that type of energy, you're going to be the guy that we want. I go back to that final game in that semifinals where we had to beat Puerto Rico, okay, uh, to qualify in Puerto Rico, which is, uh, and Nash had an, a monster mental game. Four, four seconds to go in the half, and we score to go up five, and they call a timeout. We get in the timeout, I'm, I'm talking to our guys, keep everything in front of you, make them take a real tough shot, don't let them, at that time you can't advance the ball, still can't advance the ball in the first half, keep everything in front of you, like that. So we break from the timeout, and I'm, I'm standing there and I'm looking at the floor, and I realize that Puerto Rico has made substitutions and they've put five little guys on the floor, and I've got my regular lineup out there with the two bigs. So without even thinking, I turn around and I go, quick, somebody get in, somebody get in. And, who do you think was the first guy up? Swords. Rips the sweats off and he's there and I'm like, <laughs> I had other guys in mind. <laughs> but with two fouls and our big guys, yeah, go, yeah, go, go. Four seconds, you can't hurt us that bad. They have the ball. Um, he subs into the game and he runs up. Again, we're up five. He pressures the basketball. They throw the ball in, he chases it, he tips it from behind, Nash steals it, Nash throws it over top, and Swords lays the ball in. Seven point lead at halftime. In four seconds, he only played four seconds in the whole game. He had a steal and two points. We started the second half, we went bang, bang, two threes in a row, a 12 point lead, and the fans started throwing stuff at the Puerto Ricans, at their own team, and we ended up winning and going on to win. But that's the type of player that is fun to coach. Is he the best player? No. Did he get into coaching? Yes. And that's why he relays the same information to all of you uh, that you can relay to your kids about hard work and being the right type of player. And I've really enjoyed being here, so thank you very much. Thank you.